Country 2. Big Bear City traffic, Sky Hawk 809 on one, making it aboard to take off runway 8, Big Bear City. Yeah, Sky Hawk 809 on one, we're at Cessna 172, Information Lima over here at the T Hangers. Like to request taxi out for a practiced rejected takeoff. Sky Hawk 909 on one, Roger, runway 8, taxi via Alpha. 8 via Alpha 809 on one, thanks. Welcome to part two of the AQP Grassroots Series where Dan Greider is teaching me, a young, inexperienced CFI, how to change the way I give recurrent flight training to general aviation pilots. We're facing a real problem in general aviation with an astounding fatal accident rate when compared to the airlines. And Dan has applied his experience as an airline captain and instructor to introduce the airline training concept of AQP to general aviation. If you want to learn more about what AQP is and why we're doing this in the first place, go check out part one of this AQP Grassroots Series. Before you go any further, go download the PDF document that goes along with this whole series. That document contains an outline of all of these fatal accident scenarios, all of these statistics for these fatal accidents, all of that kind of stuff. And if you make yourself familiar with the contents of that AQP supplement document, the videos in this series are gonna make a bit more sense. So head over to aviation101.com slash AQP grassroots and go download that PDF. Print that document out, get to know it, love it, modify it, make it your own so you can teach this stuff on your own. But if nothing else, go download that document. It has a well wealth of information in there that'll be super beneficial to understanding this series. I'm giving an AQP flight review to three pilots who we also introduced in part one, one of whom is my very own dad. These flight reviews are focusing on the scenarios that are known for taking pilots by surprise and killing them. And first up on our list to practice is the rejected takeoff. So first of all, what is a rejected takeoff? If you've never heard of that before, it's basically what it sounds like. You reject the takeoff or you aborted the takeoff. Effectively, you as the pilot got some cue during the takeoff roll that something's not right. Maybe the airplane's not performing as it should. You have a failure of some sort or the engine starts running rough. Maybe you've got more of a tailwind than you expected. Any number of these things could cause you to want to abort the takeoff, but basically something was not right and you made the decision to close the throttle and get on the brake and stop the takeoff. Rejected takeoffs are something we don't really talk about in general aviation. The clip you just watched at the beginning of the video was a rejected takeoff I did back in 2015 in a real world scenario. I'll make a separate video on that takeoff at a later time because there were a number of things we did wrong there, but the point is I made the decision as pilot in command of that aircraft to close the throttle and put the airplane back down on the runway because something didn't feel right, and I'm alive and so is that airplane because of that. But before I encountered that real world scenario in 2015, I had never given any thought or consideration to a rejected takeoff. I really didn't even know what it was. Luckily in that instance, I had the mental presence about me in that plane, in that situation to say, this is not working, and I pulled the throttle back to idle and put it down on the runway and rejected the takeoff. And that was a pretty wicked eye-opener for me. Rejected takeoffs are practiced constantly in the airline's recurrent training, but why don't we talk about it in general aviation? It's just as relevant and it can be just as fatal. In the first quarter of 2020, we already saw three fatal general aviation accidents having to do with the pilot not rejecting the takeoff when something was clearly wrong. One of these accidents was Bonanza 36 Tango Tango in Corona, California. The airplane never got airborne and plowed into the airport fence at the other end of the runway at full speed, flipped over and caught on fire. All four people were trapped inside and burned alive. Respond to an aircraft emergency. Heartbreaking moments at the airport in Corona. A plane's down. In all, four people were killed when this departing single engine Bonanza crashed through a fence, hit a berm, landed upside down, and then caught fire. The four victims in the plane did suffer extensive burn injuries. The Corona Fire Department says once that amount of fuel ignited, there was no chance of survival. We tried to take off three times and didn't get much more than two or three feet off the ground. The wind's showing to go this direction, so normal departure is into the wind. But investigators say the plane traveled from west to east on the runway, attempting to take off downwind. Yeah, psychologically, it's, it's tough for a lot of pilots. You want to go. But pilot Walt Snyder says at some point, if the plane's not lifting off, for whatever reason, it's best to abort. We didn't pull back to, to stop. Rejected takeoff, RTO. 
is something that a lot of people don't mentally prepare themselves for. The takeoff roll is a very high stress time, right? You're paying attention to a lot of things. You're watching your airspeed, you're watching the runway. What we wanna do here is define a metric that we can use on the takeoff roll to identify when something isn't right. One way to do this is to time your takeoff roll. And if it takes longer than your predetermined time based on your conditions, you abort. In the past, I've used distance for this. Instead of time, it's always worked out really well. If we are not airborne by runway 826, the intersection of 826, we okay. are aborting. Got it. Got it. Got it. High density altitude. That's really important to have an abort plan. If we're not off by 826, we're going to abort the takeoff. The idea is to give yourself some metric that you can easily identify on the takeoff roll. I like to use like a large runway marking like the thousand foot markers or a taxiway or runway intersection, something like that. Those are clearly defined distance metrics that you can see with your peripherals as they go by you on your takeoff roll. You never know when something isn't gonna be right on the takeoff roll. It could be that your engine isn't putting out as much power as it's supposed to. Maybe you have more of a tailwind than you thought you would, or density altitude is higher than you calculated. All of these instances will yield a longer takeoff roll than you expect. And that's why it's so important to be ready with an abort point and stick to it. If you're not wheels up and climbing by your abort point, just reject the takeoff and figure out why you're rolling was taking longer than expected once you vacated the runway. At the end of our before takeoff checklist in the Cessna 172, we have an item that reminds us to brief the abort plan. And this ought to be on every single pre-takeoff checklist. I really don't know why it's not. Is there such a thing as a as a rejected takeoff on any FAA single engine check ride? Not that I'm aware of, not that I've been If you're, of. maybe your density altitude is higher than you thought it was. Mm -hmm. Or maybe pilot controlled field, you taxi to the wrong end of the runway, you read the windsock wrong. Okay. You haven't had your coffee yet. Yeah. You've read yeah, the windsock uh, wrong, right? We want to have a defined set of criteria. One piece of criteria is all we need. As a defining, a defined point when we will either continue the takeoff or reject the takeoff. Okay, if we're not off by taxiway Bravo, I'm aborting this takeoff. Something's wrong. Mm -hmm. Or if we're going to Oshkosh and we're real heavy <laughs> at Max Gross, if we're not crossing the intersection of 1331 and we're not, you know, if, we're, if we've crossed that and we're not getting light and getting airborne, we're aborting the takeoff, something's wrong. Uh, I'm excited, gonna do all kinds of maneuvers, gonna actually put into use all the things we talked about in theory on the ground. The first exercise to run through on these flight reviews is to practice the rejected takeoff, and we'll simply make ground control aware of what we wanna do, and so long as they're not too busy, they can work with us. So what we're gonna do first, while we're here at San Marcos, we've got all these nice long runways, right? We're gonna run through a drill and practice a rejected takeoff, but um, we'll go out to a runway that they're not using. And once you go full power, I'm gonna reach up here and just give you a simulated power loss. I'm gonna pull your throttle back a bit. Okay. As if you have, you have a sick engine or perhaps you have a tailwind, dragging brakes, whatever it may be. And you know, one, two, Charlie Delta, we're a Cirrus SR20 over here at the T-Hangers. Information Echo, we'd like to run a drill here and uh, do a practice rejected takeoff. We'd actually like to reject a takeoff. If we could use perhaps a runway that, that's inactive, uh, that'd be great. We basically just want to do a high-speed taxi and reject the takeoff. Cirrus one, two, Charlie Delta, plan a runway eight and up to Charlie, and we are uh, using runway one, three. Uh, Cirrus one, two, Charlie Delta, not entirely sure we'd be able to stop before Charlie. Any chance we could use 1-7 for that? Cirrus 1-2 Charlie Delta, roger. Uh, runway 1-7, you can plan on that. And taxi via Alpha Bravo, Charlie Juliet, cross runway 8 and hold short of runway 1-3. Okay, we'll taxi to runway 1-7 via Alpha Bravo, Charlie Juliet, cross 8, hold short of 1-3. 1-2 Charlie Delta, we appreciate it. Sure. All right. Okay, before taxiing checklist, taxiing check the parking lane is off. Brakes check. We've checked those. Orientation. Check, attitude gyro, turn coordinator, check. It's all in here, so next checklist. Basically what I'm gonna do here is let the pilot set takeoff power and begin the takeoff roll. I'm gonna sneak my CFI hand in there and reduce their power a bit to simulate a sick engine. Now this reduced power could also simulate a tailwind, a high density altitude, any of those. Reducing the power is just how we're gonna simulate a longer than expected takeoff roll. The point here is not necessarily for the pilot to recognize that the engine instruments don't look right, but more so for them to identify when they're passing their predetermined abort point, recognize that we're not airborne when we should have been, and I wanna see that recognition lead them to reject the takeoff on their own without me prompting them. All I'm there to do is reduce the power a bit to simulate a longer takeoff roll, and I want to see them take action from there. Rob in the Cirrus is up first, and Dan caught what was about to be a miscommunication. Rob didn't seem like he totally understood the drill that was about to happen because I didn't explain it very well. So we all spent a few extra minutes at the foot of the runway to kind of explain what was about to happen on the runway. I'll uh, talk for just a second while we're holding short and uh, 
and brakes are set. Um, what Josh said was that, that our rejected takeoff, he's not going to necessarily chop your throttle. After you set power for takeoff, he's going to ease a little power back to simulate giving you a sick engine. So your, your airplane is not going to make proper thrust. So after you set thrust, you're going to see his hand come up and he's going to ease a little bit of power back. You'll see that you're going to you're going to be still rolling when you pass your point where you should have been airborne. Then you make your decision. You don't make your decision when he simulates your your sick engine yep. because you haven't decided yet you haven't got to your metric yet but when you got get it. to that to that threshold and the airplane's not flying then you say well obviously there's something wrong i got yep. dragon brakes i got a i got a mag problem i got some kind of problem this airplane is not making thrust okay got it there's two charlie delta cross runway one three the system is departing and then continue with your taxi to runway one seven okay we'll cross runway one three continue to one seven one, uh, one two charlie delta that makes sense, Josh. That absolutely makes sense. That, okay, that's a uh, yeah. That, that was good to explain it because uh, now it's clear. Yeah, yeah. For demonstration purposes, Rob declared the 1,000 foot markers as his abort point. So in other words, if we're not getting light and ready to get airborne by passing the 1,000 foot markers, we're going to abort the takeoff. And I basically want to see you reject the takeoff if we are not airborne by the 1,000 foot markers. We won't be airborne. Right. So what okay. you're going to do is you're going to go full power. I'm going to sneak my hand in here and make your engine sick. I'm going to okay. reduce the power, and okay. you're going to start accelerating real slowly. Something's not going to feel right. What's going on? Yep. And you need to identify when we blow past the 1,000-foot markers, we need to abort. We're not off the ground. That sound good? Sounds good. Sounds good. Okay. San Marcos Tower, Sierra's 1-2, Charlie Delta is holding short of runway 17, Juliet. Uh, we're ready to uh, execute our rejected takeoff here. Sierra's 2, Charlie Delta, your high-speed abort is approved down runway 17. High speed abort approved down runway 1712 Charlie Delta will exit at Foxtrot. Sounds good, sir. And now you can cross runway 13 contact ground on Foxtrot. Okay, we'll cross 3 1 and we'll contact ground on Foxtrot 12 Charlie Delta. Okay, one last check of the windsock, almost directly down the runway. Lined up. Airspeed's alive. Whoa, something going on here. My fuel flow is low, my RPMs are low. Abort. Something wrong. And we're all at the end, we'll debrief that when we're off. Alright, so we'll get past the hold line entirely and we'll uh, come to a stop and execute that after landing checklist. Okay, sounds good. Make sure the airplane's all cleaned up. Power level 1,000, fuel pump comes off, and pitot heat is off. Okay. Good deal. Okay, so yeah, so you, you obviously noticed a change in the engine. Obviously, I reached up and, and pulled the power back. Uh, what we want to really focus on is your is your defined abort point. So you, you aborted maybe about two or 300 feet past the 1,000-foot markers, or maybe about 200 feet or so. Um, so basically, once we were past those 1,000-foot markers, you know, we're not airborne, so it's an, it should be an automatic abort, which you pretty much did. You just kind of verified it with the engine instruments and stuff like uh, that. But that's why we define an easily, uh, an, a point that you can easily identify on the runway. And as soon as you see it past your peripherals, I'm not in the air, abort. That's okay. what we're looking for on the RTO. That's part of pre-flight preparation. Okay. You want to identify on the chart, okay, what are my markings on the runway? What can be my... Reje uh, my rejection point. I Usually I do that, you know, looking at foreflight before I get in the plane. Okay, this is what runway we're going to use. It's, I've got plenty of taxiways that I can call my abort point. I'm going to call it this taxiway, etc. Yep. So, uh, but other than that, it was real good. So, you got radios. Okay. You, you can go ahead and call ground. Did All you right. have anything at, at oh, good. Okay. Um, go ahead and call ground and tell them we're off runway 35 Fox and we want to depart eastbound. We pretty much covered the important parts there. We want to reject mainly based on the fact that we're not airborne by our abort point, but Rob handled it very nicely. Judging the health of the takeoff solely by reference to your engine instruments won't always paint the full picture for you. Let's take my rejected takeoff in Big Bear back in 2015 as an example for this. We got off the ground right about where we thought we would and the engine was performing as expected, but what kept us from climbing was a gust front that hit us from behind on the takeoff roll, robbing us of the airspeed we needed to climb. And after a few seconds of the airplane struggling to climb, I decided to close the throttle and set it back down while I still could. Next up is Miles in the Cherokee. I had to be a bit more proactive with reducing the throttle in this airplane because with the stole kit, I know this thing can leave the ground pretty easily. All right. So our board plan, we should uh, 
We should be at rotate speed about a thousand footers. If we're not, we'll pull power, get on the brakes. This rejected takeoff, I'm going to block your throttle. If I need to reduce your throttle a little bit, I might do that. Okay. If I need to, I'm going to start kind of pushing your throttle back a little bit, just okay. just so we're like not going to get to rotation speed. San Marcos Tower, Cherokee 8859 or November is holding short of runway 31 at Foxtrot, ready to do our uh, uh, high speed aborted takeoff on runway 35. The Cherokee 59 in November, the traffic lifted up just a bit. You have a window here, so runway 31, you can go on runway 31 for your taxi. Okay, we'll enter uh, runway 31 for this rejected takeoff, and we'll exit the runway at the end on Juliet, and we'll get ready for a takeoff. Cool, there's a question. Appreciate it. All right, runway 31 now, so that's good. All right. Doesn't change your criteria, right? No. Just 6318 Delta Summer, so report left down for runway 13. Report left downwind for runway 13. Okay. 13 Delta. Cessna 6318 Delta, report left downwind runway 13 and say your altitude. And we don't have any airspeed. 4100 and report left downwind for runway 13, 18 Delta. Beautiful. Never made I airspeed. Like good, good, good. Nice soul. Very nicely executed. You were very aware of where your, your criteria was. And you want to pick something that's nice and easy to see, so we'll debrief that a little bit more when we get off the runway up here. We'll just kind of keep a high-speed taxi up here. That's a rejected takeoff. Excellent. Did you like how that was executed? Yep. Yeah, okay. Yep. Now we'll just do a U-turn right here. So you, you pick up on the fact that you're not making the airspeed you should, you're not feeling the acceleration you should, you know, taking into consideration your weight and all that good stuff. Um, we also had a tailwind, too, so that contributed. Um, and you saw your criteria, these big white blocks painted on the runway, you're passing them and you're not anywhere close. The airplane's not even getting light. Right. So you just say, oh, no, no uh, we don't like this. We're chopping the power and we're aboarding. That was perfectly executed. Great. Okay. Uh, any notes? Good. Yeah. All right, good to Excellent. go. My dad's rejected takeoff was also very well done, but he did pick a point pretty far down the runway, which in and of itself isn't necessarily a bad thing when you've got this much pavement to work with. But for the sake of departing on a shorter runway, we want to choose an abort point that's not too far beyond where we think we'll actually rotate. So we can make that decision to abort sooner rather than later. Basically, when you're picking your abort point, be as realistic as you can and get it close to where you actually think you're going to rotate. You're going to identify whether we're at rotation speed, whether we're getting light or not. And if we're not getting light by your abort point, you know what to do. And I want to see you do it. Does that make sense? Is there anything I skipped over there, Dan? Anything You're you good. Want? Okay. San Marcos Tower, Skyhawk 80991 is holding short of runway 8 at Alpha, ready to execute our practice uh, rejected takeoff. Cessna 09991, San Marcos Tower, Roger. Uh, approve as requested, runway 8. Approved as requested, runway 8. And uh, we'll hold short of 17 when we get to the end. Roger. All right. Ready? All right, yeah, whenever you're ready. That's all you get. with the engine here. Something's wrong. So what do you do? We're coming on Bravo here. I'm going to go ahead and abort. All right. Well, there you go. We'll, we'll uh, back taxi 17 and uh, get off the runway at the end and we'll debrief that. It's Cessna 9901. You can turn left on the runway 17. Back taxi runway 17. Advisor ready for departure. Okay, we'll turn left 17. Back taxi. We'll exit on Juliet if that's okay and we'll advise you when we're ready. I just hold short of runway 17 on Juliet. We'll hold short 17 on Juliet 9901. So that was good on the rejected takeoff. I think Bravo was uh, pretty far down there. It was. The entire point of that exercise is to be able to identify very easily on the runway where your abort point is and, and know when you're passing it. And you did that. Would Bravo be okay because you had plenty of runway past that, but if you, for sure, if you weren't up by Bravo. For sure, if you're not off by Bravo. So, that's, so should you pick something more reasonable, you know, closer in? I, I try to pick something within reason. That way I can tell, first of all, as soon as possible. And also, you, that helps you determine whether you've got a sick engine or not. Because, you know, if, you, if we were to crunch the numbers, we would have said, okay, we, we can definitely be up and climbing by the 1,000-foot markers. You'd be able to tell sooner that we've got a sick engine. But we could still 
been ready to fly by Bravo, but that's way too long, so there still probably would have been a problem with Right, we're not producing we're, power, yeah. we've got brakes dragging, something's, something's not right. The point of that exercise is to be able to recognize when you're coming up to your abort point, we're not ready to fly, something's not right, you didn't meet your criteria, you're yeah. aborting the takeoff. That makes sense? Yeah. So you did a good job. What do you have for that, good. Dan? Okay. Good. All right, so that's the rejected takeoff. So you've got the radios. Now we're going to depart eastbound. Rejected takeoffs are something we just don't talk about in general aviation very much. To most pilots, the option of closing the throttle and aborting the takeoff roll never crosses their mind. It never crossed my mind before that scenario in 2015, and I got lucky with that one. Sitting in the comfort of your own home watching this video, it may seem like it's an obvious option that if something's wrong, just abort the takeoff. But when was the last time that you advanced the throttle to takeoff power and you were actively thinking about and ready to reject the takeoff? When will you make the decision to abort or not? And is there a particular point on the runway that you need to make that decision by if things don't look right? Think about these things next time you're gonna go fly because quite frankly, your life and your passengers' lives depend on it. Like I said, in the first quarter of 2020, we've already had three fatal accidents regarding rejected takeoff. Do you feel as though we in general aviation are adequately prepared for a rejected takeoff scenario? In this instructor's opinion, no, we're not. So let's change that. This video is a part of an entire series called AQP Grassroots, where Dan and I are trying to change the mindset of the pilot community in general aviation when it comes to recurrent training. We're not looking to change the rules or regs or get the government involved here or there. We don't need that. What we need is for the general aviation pilot community as a whole to start taking their lives a lot more seriously when it comes to flying. And we can do that by getting serious about our recurrent training. And this is where we start that conversation. That is AQP Grassroots. I hope you got something out of this video. I know I certainly got something out of it working with Dan and filming it and editing it. If you have any constructive comments for us, please do leave those down below and give this video a like if you liked it and share it. Share the crap out of this video. We want to get this message out across the general aviation pilot community. Be sure to subscribe to Aviation 101 and turn on those notifications so you don't miss part three when it comes out. If you want to support what we do here at Aviation 101, you can do that in a couple of ways. You can shop merch and flight gear at aviation101.com store. And for exclusive content, live streams, and giveaways, you can join up at Cockpit Club on aviation101.com. And on Cockpit Club, I do post exclusive content for members only. And I'm going to be taking the full length cuts of the briefings and debriefings and flights from this entire AQP series those will be posted on Cockpit Club. Until next time, everyone, I want you to stay happy, stay healthy, stay current, and of course, stay proficient. Get out there and go think about your rejected takeoff plan. Fly safe. We'll see you in the next one.